Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back CTKS family. Here you'll learn how to become fearless in financial markets to assist you to become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. Happy New Year everyone. Kate and I are very grateful that you're joining us today. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Borsog, especially focusing in on TRB, which is Teller. I often call TRB trouble because TRB tends to just go nuts as the market is going down. We've seen a bit of a change in direction in Teller across the months. But something pretty scary happened in the past 24 hours. Trouble decided or Teller decided to come down over 60%. There's a strong probability you're not even in TRB at all. What I would like you to think about as we do a bit of an analysis on TRB, what if this was one of the tokens that you were heavily invested in and the price action did what happened to trouble? What would you do? It's a very important thing that you need to go through. You'll find that getting your mindset correct is incredibly important to your profitability. In fact, you can't be profitable without a good mindset. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. All indicators that I use in the daily videos come from the service at ctksmethod.org. Let's run the numbers. In the crypto market and the stock market, you must be very aware that often things come up very significantly and they can fall just as significantly. In the past 24 hours, Teller, or what I call trouble, TRB, came down over 67%. TRB spiked up and then spiked down. When we analyze a chart, we make sure that we have logarithmic scale on, which is equal percentage movements, not equal absolute movements. Equal absolute movements don't really mean much in an exponential asset class. In fact, they mean nothing, statistically speaking. Also, it's a very good idea to set your time zone to UTC negative five, which is the New York time zone. Let's have a look at what trouble is doing right now. We saw that it spiked up and then just came crashing down. This is a typical capitulation move to the upside, a positive capitulation move. We can also see that Teller has done incredibly well. It's gone through these spikes before and a lot of cryptos are very spiky. You'll notice these upsurges and decays. It happens all the time. The crypto market is very volatile. The key is not to get sucked in when price is coming up, but to buy on red as price is either flatlining or turning around. And there's many strategies to do this. Negative capitulations are very profitable. If you look at this negative price momentum, let's just zoom in here a little bit so that we can see what's going on here. When you look at this kind of negative price momentum, that occurred recently. What date was that? About the 10th of June. A lot of people would be just fleeing the market in these periods of time. But you can see this is typically a pretty good time to get in. What about here where it was just plummeting down? If you're looking at price like this, you've always got to feel, get a feeling of price where you don't know what's happening to the right. Just assume this was the current price action. What would you do? The vast majority of people would of course sell. And what happened? It turned around. And this is what we see time and time again in the crypto market. What about this particular price action? This is on, of course, a daily basis. But if we go into a lower time frame, we would see the price coming up and up with big green candles and then just decaying very, very quickly. A lot of people would be attracted to this particular price momentum. And a lot of people would get in for 27 plus because they would say, ah, this thing is going to the moon. It's going to take off. Unfortunately, price is always moving in a wave. 
TRB has shown incredible strength across the months, but you do not want to get caught on the wrong side of the percentage. You don't want to get caught at $30 and then see the price coming down and down and down. Typically what will occur is people will buy up here and say, ouch, I really messed up. They'll hold on for a certain amount of time and probably sell when the price action looks to be going really red, such as this. If we pop on, a bit of a percentage indicator from here down to here, we can see that that's a near 62% drop. That's really ugly. And this kind of behavior happens in crypto and also the stock market all the time. Instead of doing this, we need to rewire our minds. Instead of buying when it's going up, we want to get a little bit fearful when it's going up. We can see here with TRB that it came down nearly 53%. These are the negative sides of the equation. But what about the positive side? Why on earth would we buy on red? If we bought on red and then sold on green, a lot of times we would just seek to take out a reasonable rate of return, not necessarily the top of the peak. When people get in, they want to buy the bottom and they want to sell the top. The best thing that you can ever do for your profitability is throw that idea away. Just trash it. Tops become bottoms, bottoms become tops, and the problem is you never know where either is. Because price is always moving structural level to structural level. What about what's happening right now? Let's just fast forward in time and we can see TRB is coming down. What about if we looked at TRB from that long tail spike and just say that you were fortunate enough to buy down there? That's a 52% increase. That's not bad. Often you're very safe in capitulations, but you must know what you're doing. That's why in the CTKS family, we have levels where we buy at structure going down below the current price, especially when you go outside the big guys. That is around the top 20. You really need to put your levels way, way down because you can get price behavior that is like this. It's very common. Just going from the top of TRB just down to the bottom, we can see it's over an 80% decline and that's in 24 hours. That would have caught so many on the wrong side of the percentage. There's a very big difference between making money and keeping money, especially in the markets. Please let me know if you were trading Teller or TRB, which I affectionately call Trouble. If you're trading tokens like Trouble, TRB, you've got to get really used to this negative price momentum. Price can come down and it can come down really, really hard and it can keep going down. The key is to always uncover the structural levels. No matter what crypto you're trading, it's always important to bear in mind how Bitcoin's gravitational pull will directionally pull up or directionally push down any specific crypto that you're involved with. If Bitcoin, this blue line, is going well, it's going up, you can be assured that your particular alt is doing well. But if Bitcoin comes down, you can be assured that your alt will suffer. And if it comes down hard and fast like these areas, your alts will be affected. But they'll be affected far, far more than what Bitcoin will be. That's why you must understand the directional correlation between Bitcoin and your alts. Inside the crypto market, many people are pointing towards manipulation. They're saying that so many shorts and longs got liquidated inside TRB and that caused this massive dump. First, a massive short liquidation increased the price of TRB up to that $600 and then it tanked down because all the longs got liquidated. And we can see right here that the TRB total liquidations were 26.41 million with the majority being liquidated which is the long side, 15.66 million. A lot of people are always asking, Ken, should I buy the dip? Just always remember that the dip can keep on dipping. This is something to just bear in mind. Generally, after the first big, big spike down, you're reasonably safe to step in and buy because people will just naturally be optimistic that things are going to repair themselves. 
But if negative price momentum continues over any period of time, it will just slowly decay, just like this. Then it comes down to your strategy. What are you seeking to do with any specific crypto that you get into? Are you seeking to dollar cost average in? If so, you really want to buy when the price is coming down, not when it's going up. If you've got a very large account, one of the things that you want to focus on are the tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 charts. The highly speculative alts can bleed your account dry. You'll find that it's one thing to make money and another thing to keep the money. Big losses can create literally PTSD. You will find that when you're trading and investing, your emotional state will dictate your profitability. When you get an unexpected negative outcome, for example, you were trading and investing in TRB and it went 80% against you and you sold. And unfortunately, you may have gone all in and more. The one thing that you don't want to do is blame yourself or blame others. It's important to get out of this particular cycle, out of the anger cycle, into the awareness and understanding cycle. Learn from it. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. Seek to gain additional knowledge. When we blame, we externalize the problem and create compounding losses because our anger and all sorts of negative emotions impact every single facet of our life. That's why gaining insight is the key, awareness and understanding. One critical piece of awareness and understanding is that we control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. It's never an academic exercise to do your three-dimensional risk management. You need to know what you're going to do. For example, in trouble, maybe you're all in and more. Maybe you're just leveraged up 10x, 25x, just like you see all those people on Twitter slash X doing. If price moves against you, and it will, you need to know what you're going to do if price goes against you, goes nowhere, or goes for you. You must seek to get synchronized in with the market just to raise your synchronization score as much as humanly possible. To gain insight, you need a lot of rules. Rule 45 is incredibly powerful. No ult can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We saw it before that when TRB is going up, in all probability, Bitcoin is leading the charge. And when Bitcoin weakens, we see TRB weaken as well. This plays out across the vast majority of alts. Not always in perfection. Directional correlation doesn't mean 100% association. There are lags. Sometimes the alts will move before Bitcoin. Sometimes they'll move after. But the general focus, they move together. What you will typically find when you just start off and you feel that your finances are limited, you'll take incredible risk. This incredible risk will generally wipe out your account. However, if you obey the rules of large accounts, which large accounts always focus on the top cryptos and the top stocks, they're not after penny stocks, they're not after the 100 to 1 gambles. And you might say, oh, Ken, that's fine, because when you get all that money, you can just focus on only putting it into these big names. But the big names don't move much, or do they? Sometimes they really do. Sometimes they move a lot, and they move a lot quickly. But Ken, I want a thousand X, a million X. That's what you're told, and that's what causes your accounts to blow up. Not in a good way. Many people say, I want to be incredibly wealthy. I want to be rich. If you want to do that, you must think how those people think. Those people don't take unnecessary risks. A lot of people think the rich are very stupid with their money. Nothing could be further from the truth. They guard each dollar, but it's not stinginess. It's also important to manage your position sizes. Jesse Livermore at one stage was one of the richest people on the planet. Because of leverage and because of a few other things, he lost it all. Making money is one thing. Keeping it is a completely different thing. Inside Zone 1 and Zones 2, people just throw a dart at a dartboard, but they don't know where the dartboard really is. After so many decades inside financial markets, you're much better off to specialize. 
get to know the handful of top performers and get to know their personalities and how they move. Unfortunately, most people don't understand percentages, especially annualized return on investments. If you just put a minimal amount into the market, say $100 per level, and you made approximately just 2% net, what you would see is if you could do that each day and roll it over, your gross annualized return on investment is staggering. But people are never taught this. The rich know this. The rich focus on this. The very wealthy know that you can't fight all the rounds in the, in the fight in the first round. You need to go through the process. And that's what this is about. When you look at gross annualized return on investment and net annualized return on investment, so long as they're greater than 100%, you're doing incredibly well. When other people are posting their returns on investment, you understand that's simply an absolute ROI. Inside our community, what you need to do first is to go at spot. Don't use leverage. Leverage will wipe out your account if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, it's incredibly dangerous. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. You can use it if you want to, but just be really careful of it. And if you do not know what you're doing, if you're just learning and using high leverage, you're going to wipe out your account sooner or later. It's just an unfortunate truth. But Ken, I want an uplifting message. I want to hear that I'm going to have the life of my dreams with no knowledge and gambling. No, you won't get it that way. You must know what you're doing. You must just focus on learning, gaining insight, understanding the rules of the market. Not going all in and more like a light switch, but just going in at levels and coming out at levels more like a dimmer. And when you're a dimmer, you basically go in and out. It's like turning your thermostat up or down, your aircon or your heating. When people are like a light switch, it's either lava or freezing cold, on or off. They believe in perfect timing. They have tremendous impatience. They only make a one-way decision. It's going to go my way. There's no other way that it can go. I am absolutely certain it will go that way. And often the position sizes are far too large. And if the return is 100x just out of one particular thing, you're taking on a lot of risk. Instead, moving with the ebbs and flows of the market is what is most profitable. When we look at Ethereum over the past couple of days, if you were buying on red, you would be selling on green right now. What about something like Solana? Absolutely, you would have done really, really well. And you might notice with Solana, and this is a trade history, this is a live trade history just from Binance. I wasn't buying here as Solana was going up because I felt it was too overextended relative to Solana's structure. But when I came back in, I leaned in quite well. And you can see this turnover of positions. The little green arrows are buys. The little red arrows are sells. And they're all really good annualized ROIs. If we look into Bitcoin, this buying on red, selling on green is a very powerful methodology. You will consistently make money. That's really the first step that you want to take. You want to be able to make money no matter what the market condition is. And I'm going long at spot. I'm not using any leverage. I'm a very big believer in doing the cheat sheet. It's really quite important. Just bear in mind that the main stock market doesn't come online until the next 24 hours. So literally, it's not trading. We're going to get some trading inside the Forex pairs as well as commodities. You can see the two different pauses here, like that light gray one is opens January 1st and the red one US January 2nd UTC negative 5. It's a very good idea to set your charts to New York time and what we can see now inside the crypto market we were seeing a lot of long liquidations that's just starting to level out but there's been a huge number of liquidations just recently. 
Total, Bitcoin and Ethereum are looking really interesting. So just keep your eyes on this as well. We've got momentum upwards. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please let me know. The real question, are you prepared for an 80% drawdown? Would you know what to do if that happened? Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. An important thing to consider if you're trading outside the tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 charts, always make sure that you're prepared for an 80% plus drawdown. And you also may find that you get a continuous drawdown like this. So just be very aware of that. The reason to focus in on the top tier charts is to move away from this very short sighted concept of 100x gains and just move to an annualized return on investment. Something that could be really helpful. What the heck is a 100x return? It's just your return divided by your investment should equal 100. In that case, you just put two zeros on your initial absolute investment. And you can see the gross annualized return on investment. That is really low. Let's go back to that kind of 2%. Just taking out fees, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see, you can see the huge difference in gross annualized return on investment. If you want 100x, thinking differently is your key to get it. This is the secret of 100x. Instead of seeking to get your 100x all in one hit and going through the emotional roller coaster of zone 1 and zone 2, not to mention the anger and hurt when things just don't work out and they won't, especially if you're after 100x in one hit. Sticking to the tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 charts, you'll get your 100x, but you must know what you're doing. But it is definitely the way to go. When you know the secrets of getting 100x, it's just a weight off your shoulders. You can just move in accordance with the volatility inside the markets. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.